Aloha! Welcome to World of Peace with me, Amy Katutum. This week, I am at Wapatamagai, California, and I will be updating viewers of DMC all around the world with the latest news and activities that took place in the past week, and also to rejoice in the merits of the ceremony that took place at Wapatamagai Bavalia on May 24, 2015. So let's go have a look at this activity and also the other activities that took place in the past week. The ceremony is to place the boundary marker spheres to establish the sanctuary of Wapatamagai Bavalia started on May 23, 2015, with the chanting by the monastic community led by the representatives of the Sankat Supreme Council in order to purify the land where the establishment of the temple would be placed. This ceremony was kindly led by Most Venerable Pra Maha Potiwong Satan, who is the abbot of Wat Raj Ola Sarlam followed by the robe offering ceremony and lighting lanterns in order to pay homage to the Lord Buddha. Then on May 24, 2015, there was a great amount of lay devotees, not only from Europe, but also from Thailand and other countries, that flew there to be a part of the important ceremonies taking place that day. It started off with an alms offering ceremony to the monastic community. Most Renal Prat Pomdilok, who is the committee of the Sankat Supreme Council, stated that it is so amazing that the establishment ceremony of a temple in a foreign country is well attended by this great number of Buddhists and locals. Even though it is so difficult to propagate Buddhism overseas, but due to the power of faith that Buddhists have, the religious works can be done as we wish. And after, there was a ceremony to place the boundary marker spheres in eight different directions, as well as an additional 108 smaller boundary spheres. Representing on behalf of Prateb Yan Mahamuni were Mr. Anand Asawat Polkin and Ms. Sawani Hirayasiri, who invited the sacred principal crystal ball that was called the Great Imperial Crystal Ball of Bavalia to be placed at the deepest spot of the temple in the middle of the sanctuary amidst the peaceful environment yet full of tremendous power of merits. Then the monastic community chanted to complete the establishment ceremony of this piece of land to become the Buddhist sanctuary of Wapatamagai Bavalia in accordance with the monastic disciplines. We would like to take this chance to rejoice in the merits of the people and everyone who took part in the establishment of Wapatamagai Bavalia. On May 17th at 5 p.m. local time in India at Bodh Gaya in the Indian state of Bihar, there was a great chanting of the Buddha's mantra to stop the earthquake by Padmahani Ponyana Wilo and other Thai monks along with international monks such as monks from India, China, Laos, Myanmar, Cambodia, Tibet, novices from Bangladesh, Lamas of Bhutan, Lamas of Nepal. The great chanting was done under the shade of the great Bohit tree. When the chanting was over, the monastic community gave Nepalese people blessings and held the ceremony of transferring blessings to Nepalese people by lighting candles under the shade of the great Bohit tree. And on May 20th, 2015, at 5 p.m. in local time in Nepal, at Wat Sayam Puwanat in Kathmandu, Most Renal Prate Potiwite, the head of the Buddhist missionaries sent to India and Nepal, along with Buddhist missionaries from Thailand, such as Most Renal Prate Potikun, Most Renal Prate Balayat Potiwite, and Most Renal Prate Nolana Jethiya Pilat, along with international monks and Nepalese people, totaling in over 200, attended the chanting ceremony for the peace of Nepal by bringing the bright candlelight from under the great Bohi tree at Bodh Gaya. After that, there was a meditation session to make wishes and to bring the peaceful light back to Nepal, then followed by the circumambulation ceremony around the Sayampu Wanad Sitiya. The pictures of that ceremony were published in Kathmandu Post, the number one newspaper of Nepal, and its copies were sent to every country where Nepalese people reside. The newspaper shows pictures of the Buddhist monks lighting candles at Sayam Puwanad Sitiya to send the souls of the people who lost their lives during the earthquake to the fortunate realms, and to bless the Nepalese people to be back to their peaceful state. 
Special thanks to news from Wat Thai Gusinala Shalom Lad Facebook fan page. On May 18, 2015, the helping team from the Demakan Foundation, led by Most Venerable s a n u k i t i s a k o who is the Nepalese monk who ordained and studied Tamma at Wat Patamakai, Thailand, has given survival bags offered by the Demakan Foundation to the earthquake-affected people at Tambon Karastali and Mana Maju village. There are over 60 families living there. The survival bag consists of necessities such as rice, nuts, sugar, mosquito net, candle, and soap. On May 20, 2015, the helping team with the group of Buddhist missionaries, Nepalese Buddhist monks, and WFBY went to help affected people in Sailung and d o k l a h a which was located 150 kilometers to the east of Kathmandu, where there were over 100 houses of Buddhist population that were destroyed. After that, they headed for Talajang and k w a k h a located in the northwest of Kathmandu, where there were over 750 families who were still waiting for help. The support of the d a m a k a o Foundation via the idea of Pratep y a r m a h a m u n i l o n g p a t a m a t s h e y o who is the president of the d a m a k a o Foundation, has been in continuous progress. Their team is still in the vicinity to keep up with the situation and give assistance to the disaster victims every day, emphasizing on providing aid packages including tents, blankets, mosquito nets, food, drinking water, etc. Secondly, they provide volunteer treatment teams to distribute basic first aid kits to patients. And thirdly, they hold universal goodness trainings and lift up the victim's spirits to be able to fight and continue their lives happily. On Wednesday, May 6, 2015, Wat Patamagai Chicago organized a meditation class for locals where there were 26 locals who participated in this class, which marks the biggest amount so far this year. Part of the participants were students from the comparative religious course at Wilbur Wright College. They had some interesting questions about Buddhism and meditation, and the teaching monk kindly gave them clarification. They were all interested in meditation and were very impressed with the monk's answers. Here are some pictures from the first Central America and Caribbean Peace Fellowship that was organized by Peace Revolution that took place at Lake Atalan, Guatemala from May 13 to May 17, 2015, where the participants were able to learn about meditation. Meditation can help them achieve inner peace, develop positive thinking, gain emotional resilience, and increase human capacities such as empathy, and kindness. And let's see the pictures as the Peace Revolution team visited Guatemala for the Peace on Demand. Peace on Demand is a series of events organized in partnership with local organizations with the purpose of sharing the experience of meditation with many people. For more information about Peace Revolution and their activities, please visit www.peacerevolution.net. So I would like to rejoice in the activities that took place in the past week. And now it's time for the blessing of the week by p r a t e b y a n Mahamuni, l o n g p a t a m a t s h a y o who is the abbot of Wat Patamakai and the president of the d a m a k a i Foundation. The Eight Worldly Conditions The eight things associated with worldly life are gain and loss, honor and dishonor, happiness and misery, praise and blame. All of these are inevitable for everyone, whether they are willing to face it or not. Whenever good karma bears fruit, one will receive gain, honor, happiness, and praise. On the contrary, when bad karma has its effect, one suffers from loss, dishonor, misery, and blame. Everyone who lives in the worldly life will encounter these conditions because this world is ruled by the law of karma. This was said by Prate b y a n Mahamuni, r o n g p a u Tamat Shiyo, on July 29, 2002. 
And before I say goodbye for this week, let me remind everyone that on Monday, June 1st, 2015, is an important day in Buddhism, which is known as Visak Kabusha Day. The United Nations actually announced this day to be an international holiday in order to celebrate the Lord Buddha's birth, enlightenment, and death. So don't forget to go to your local Dhammakaya Center or any temple nearest you in order to celebrate this important day in Buddhism. For more news and update, please visit www.dhammakayapost.org Org or via the Facebook page at Demakaya Pose. And don't forget to stay tuned here to DMC for the live broadcast throughout the whole day on Visakat Busha Day. And that's all we have time for today, and I will see you again next week. Sodiha.